everybody, this is Scott from the old Curiosity Shop, and as usual, just look at all that stuff. I haven't done a thrift haul video in a little while because um, it's either been raining, or last Saturday I wasn't actually out buying, I was out selling. So, this is kind of a small thrift haul for me, but let's go through it and see what I found. I do really well selling trivets. And um, I have sold God Bless Our House, or Bless This House, Lord, we pray and make it safe by night and day. I have sold these. I haven't owned this one before. This is a little bit of a different style. Um, probably from the 1940s or 50s. It says made in the USA. This might have been made by Wilton. Uh, it might have been made in Reading, Pennsylvania. Uh, not sure, but these usually sell. I can sell these for between uh, 10 and 12 dollars and I paid one dollar for that back here is something that I don't normally pick up actually this was given to me um, long story won't go into it it's just a piece of porcelain I shouldn't say just it's pretty made in Germany don't know who the maker is really pretty minty almost a minty sea green or minty yeah minty color um, could be used as a candy dish. I don't know. Not a lot of value. Probably 10 bucks, 8 to 10 bucks. Just a nice little piece of German porcelain. I can't resist whenever I find uh, poor little orphan Christmas things. And here they are. Uh, what happened to the pepper shaker? Who knows? But there's salt. Salt. And we can see the remnants of a Japan sticker. It wasn't made in pan, it was made in Japan, but pan is all that's left. Um, this was a buck. It's cute. Hopefully somebody has the pepper and hopefully somebody has EL uh, to go with Noel. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Noel. Uh, L-E, N-O-L-E. How do you spell Noel? Noel spelled backwards is Leon. Anyway, this is the first half of Noel. It would be a little candle holder. Uh, there would have been another dude standing over here with the rest of Noel. Don't know where it is, it's gone. But again, this could be sold as a replacement. And this was made in Japan and imported by <laughs> Commodore. You know, just when I think I have discovered all of these American companies that exported Japan items, I find another one and I've never seen Commodore before. Okay, so those are both a buck. And just as little 1950s, 60s Christmas things, uh, I will not put more than $10 on, on either one of them. Two little hugging teddy bear salt and pepper shakers, really cute. They stand like that when they're mad at each other. And after they've had a romantic evening and they make up, unless it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's, all right, so... Here they are hugging each other and uh, cute little teddy bear salt and pepper shakers. Nothing on the bottom, probably Japan. And they were a dollar. So, I don't know, 12 bucks, maybe 14 for them because they're so cute. Now, this is something, you know, I uh, was not sure what this was. I had to do some research. I knew it was like a tea set, but it only says made in Japan on the bottom. And what we have here are, let me stand up and back up. There are four cups and saucers. And underneath the cups and saucers are four little plates, which could be dessert plates, whatever. Here's the cr cream and sugar. Yes. And then let you see the whole thing. Uh, and then over here is a meat platter another serving tray or platter the gravy boat with its under boat or under uh under plate connected to it and a covered uh cast covered uh you know vegetable dish now dummy me uh was thinking okay this isn't it's it's little it's tiny it's children's tea set size but I didn't know that tea sets, children's play tea sets, actually came with 
all these other, you know, serving pieces. I thought children's tea sets were cups and saucers and a cream and sugar and a coffee, a teapot. So I came home, did some research, and yeah, they actually made children's play sets, tea sets, with all of these other, just like the adults would have, for a full, a full di dinner service. There's no teapot, that hurts this, uh, but there are no chips on any of this. It's beautifully done. I mean, I'm amazed that it's gilded. Uh, it's just really beautifully done, and it probably absolutely mimics what the adults would have. So some little child was really lucky to have this and play with it. What I can sell it for without the teapot, I don't really know. Um, gosh. I do know that I paid $9 for all of it, so, you know, somebody who collects dolls is going to want this as like a display piece or something like that, so we'll see what happens to it. All right, moving along back here to the 1950s and 60s, that whole exotica, tiki culture uh, stuff that was so popular in, you know, after the Second World War, these two statues. I bought at the same, at two different places, but on the same day. They might have been made by the same company because they both have these funny little textured things on their heads. Uh, she is a lot bigger than he is, and I don't think either one of them, she says nothing, and he says, surprise, South Carolina, no, Japan. All right, so, uh, now I'm gonna need some help because I don't even know what you call these. I went online to research prices and I typed in exotica, you know, Asian statue, tacky 1960s, tiki culture. I thought of everything I could and I really don't know what you call these. Uh, so how do I search for these to find out what they sell for? I don't know. I know they were $1.50. One was a dollar, one was a dollar fifty. And there are no chips on either one of them. They're really cool. They'll probably sell for $12 or $15. I'm really not sure. These, can you tell what these are? Well, I know you know they're coasters, but if I turn it over, come on now. Now they're not marked because Platinite was not marked, but it was made by Hazel Atlas. And you saw in one of my last videos a big collection of green modern tone hazel atlas platinite. These are 1950s platinite saucers. It's a milk, uh, it's a milk glass that has a f that hazel atlas called platinite, and it has a fired on pink finish to it. So I was excited to find these because up until then I didn't know hazel atlas made platinite coasters but I do now those I haven't seen them online I don't know what I'm gonna get for them but I'm gonna try to get 20 bucks for them that'll sell for about 10 bucks uh, the black dog of course on Martha's Vineyard um, I don't do a whole lot with mugs but there's certain things I know you know people freak out over the black dog on Martha's Vineyard that was 50 cents it'll sell for about 10 that I paid a dollar for. I need some help with this too. Nothing on the bottom. It's got that real nifty 60s look. It's pottery, but I don't know what this... I think when it's when it's just gold, it just this like splattered on gold. I've seen it called weeping gold. I don't know what... It's almost like an enamel and it's textured, it's, it's thick. I don't know if they, that you can see. Anyway, it's like splattered on there. So I don't know what you call that finish. I don't know who made this. Um, anybody know? I need some help. All right, we'll put that back. Kitty back there. Not the prettiest face on this kitty. Sourpuss. But sh he was, yeah, he was a dollar. And people love their uh, kitty figures, figurines. So he or she will sell for about 12 bucks. All right, what else do I have over here? 
All right, uh, these are not really my thing, <laughs> but hey, I'm sure they're somebody's thing. These two are, can you see them? They are, uh, what do you call it? Occupied Japan uh, Colonial. They loved making these colonial figures. And there we see or Oron, O-R-I-O-N. It's probably whoever imported it. Uh, occupied Japan and uh, there aren't with all these ruffles and everything and I don't really see any chips on them or feel any chips on them anywhere uh, I don't know I mean I know people who know they're occupied Japan I, I, there's not a lot of money in it I don't know 12 15 bucks for the little set of figurines it's probably all I can get for them behind them are two more <sighs> Two more figurines. Oh no, I just knocked something over that I have to set back up. All right, these two, I'm not sure why there, there were two of them together. It's not a man and a woman and they're identical, the, the two little statues here. So I'm not sure why someone owned both two of the exact same thing, but these are also made in Japan. This is ugh, something that would collect dust, I think. Um, they will probably sell, they, these were like $3 each. I paid too much, but with all this delicate stuff, there's nothing broken on them. Their little hands are not broken until I end up, ouch, until I drop one. See if you can see better. And I don't know how they got this lace mess on here, but it's really hard. It doesn't. But I think at one time it was, act it's not pottery lace, it's, it was actual like fabric that I think they starched or enameled or something. Because it probably was really white when it was new and that's probably years of cigarette smoke that has turned her dress that color. But anyway, if anybody knows exactly what you call that kind of thing, I, I think they're just called lace something but they're just those little cheapy made in japan 50s 60s things this i bought if you saw uh one of my previous haul videos i had a shaving shaving cup that had a funny name on it harry suckle not honeysuckle harry suckle and i was going to put this apex shaving brush inside and literally on the day that I got home after buying this, the shaving mug had already sold online. So now I have a, you know, turn of the century, turn of the century or 1920s men's shaving mug, shaving brush. Those are Anchor Hocking Sunday glass, uh, well, little ice cream glasses. Not a lot of value there. They're not that old. You can see they're marked on the bottom. These could be. I don't know. These could even be 1970s, 60s, 70s. Not sure, but yeah, that was a dollar. Those were given to me by someone who was cleaning out. Those uh, eight tracks back there were free. Yes, I am old enough. I didn't have, well, actually I did, but it was in the 70s. I know I'm not speaking in complete sentences, but I had one of those machines. They were free. I don't know what they sell for. I'm just going to throw those online for probably like a buck a piece or something like that. There's an Edison cylinder that I bought for myself because I'm still working on the restoration of an Edison Amberola, which is, uh, I'll show you that maybe when I get it, well, when I get it working. A cylinder is, plays, oh, come on. All right, stay in there. I won't go into this too much, but it's a saxophone solo by Rudy Whiteoft called Saxima, made by Thomas Edison. There he is right there. And this played on a wind-up Edison cylinder machine with a big horn, which I have, but I'm still working on it. These, I'm not familiar with uh, this Lemmy, that little lemon head. It's some kind of lemonade. Uh, I've never heard of it before. I don't know if we have it here on the East Coast. I liked it because it, it was so retro looking, the graphics and the lemon head. And also a buddy of mine, uh, 
says Lemmy all the time. He says, you know, oh, let me have this or let me do that. And every time he says that, I say, how do you spell, how do you spell Lemmy? And he gets mad at me because, you know, he's really saying let me, but he's saying Lemmy. It's always teasing that he says Lemmy. So I'm probably just going to give these to him. Lemmy Lemonade. That is a 1960s uh, light that could clip on the back of your bed. And then you could sit in bed and read. It has this like magnifying guy on, thing on the front of it. I'm not sure why that needs to be there. It might, maybe it just magnifies the light without having to have a really bright light bulb. I don't know, but that was cheap. That's a refrigerator dish, uh, Pyrex butter print. I have to get, I have to clean the lid. It's perfect. Uh, the graphics on it are sweet. Um, the lid has sick glass, so I'll be scrubbing that with vinegar to get that sick glass off, and that should shine up nicely and sell for about $15. I found another, I know this looks like the stretch glass bowl that was in my video, but it's not. Um, where did I find this? I can't remember, but I know I paid like $2 for it. And no two pieces of stretch glass are exactly the same because you just really never know how the iridescence is going to come out. Um, and I love stretch glass. Beautiful color to that. There were nine or ten American companies that made stretch glass. So it could be Northwood, Imperial, uh, Jeanette, Lancaster, Vineland, uh, Tiffin. And I know I'm forgetting, did I say Northwood? So I think it's either Imperial Imperial, Imperial, or Northwood. I had one of these because I showed one of them to you in my stretch glass video, but I found two more. These are Federal, is the company that made them. The pattern is called Normandy, which I'm having a hard time. There you go. These are grill plates. And you can call them depression glass, you can call them carnival glass, you can call them iridescent glass, just don't call them late for dinner. Um, anyway. Not my style, but the three plates will sell. They sell for maybe about five bucks a plate. So I'm going to throw those online. This is what I knocked over. I had stacked all these up perfectly for you. And then I knocked them all over. These are cake toppers. They were made in Hong Kong. And there are the correct number of bowling pins here, which is what, 12? So you see the lady and the man. Obviously, dates to about 1960, uh, based on their costumes, I would say. <laughs> and. I kid you not, the man was selling these three sets for a dollar. So I'll explain to you. Here is the same set in the bag as it was manufactured. I took one of them out of the bag to, sh to show you. And here's the other set. And these are in green. She has, these are in green and red. So green and red was one color. Pink and blue was the other color. I paid one dollar and I bought three of them. I kind of, you know, I went online and I think I can actually sell one of these for, I'm going to say $4.99 plus shipping. So it got me thinking because the man said, well, I've got more. And he went and opened up a tub, one of those tubs that you pack clothing in. He had about 400 of these at least. So I'm going to go back to the flea market uh, and look for him. And I think I'm going to buy like maybe $5 worth. What's that? Just 15 bags. And just, you know, take a picture of this one unwrapped, throw it online and say that, you know, my quantity is I have 15 of these and just put like $4.99 on each of them and just let them go at that because I think they'll sell. All right, and then this black cat right here is not for sale. I, I bought, I was selling at a flea market this weekend and um, I found this and bought it for myself. 
If you want to know why, check out uh, my video called, I don't even know what it's called, but anyway, it's in my, <laughs> it's like the last one I made. Something about exciting flea market find or something. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you why I was so excited to find that and why I'm keeping it and not selling it. And the last thing I found, which I want to show you, which I'm excited about, is a big stack of 78 RPM records. These are all ethnic Polish records. Now, I've been collecting 78s for a long time, so I, I, you know, I know what to look for. These are going to sell conservatively for $10 each. They may sell... $30 each. I've got about $300, $200 to $300 worth of ethnic Pol Polish 78s here that were all recorded in the 1920s. Uh, I had two of these about a month ago, a month and a half ago. They sold for $60 for just two records and they did get shipped back to Poland and they're all, they're all of the similar age and uh, style they were as you can imagine you know Poland was just uh, there was so much abuse that took place in that country and you know after the Second World War things were in ruins things were destroyed and people are looking for that indigenous um, uh, music of their past of their history and it's recorded here a lot of this has never been re-released and so I was so excited to find this whole stack. I'm fortunate to live in a part of the country. We have um, right here in this city a large Polish population and there are old established Polish neighborhoods here where, you know, these have been in somebody's attic for since 1910 and I got them. So um, they're sitting on my stove. That's not what's for dinner tonight, but I will um, quickly let you hear one of them. So. You know, it wouldn't be Scott's old curiosity shop unless there was some music. So here's what one of them sounds like. <laughs> of Polish descent I am not even going to begin to try to do the polka for you but I wanted you to hear what it sounds like so that's my stuff stay tuned later on I will also put out my Monday night guess what sold last week on eBay so thank you to all my new watchers my new subscribers if you're new to my channel welcome thank you for tuning in and for liking and subscribing and hitting the bell so you always know when I make a new video um, and thanks for uh, the comments that you make. I read everything. I'm, I'm interested in what you have to say. I love it when you can help me identify items or, or talk to me about items that you know mean something to you. So comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. It's Scott from the old Curiosity Shop saying, do the polka, and so long for now.